I run the Laugh Comedy Club as well, but uh, a stand-up comedy career is, is one where effectively you have to do everything of a small business to run yourself. You market yourself, you are your own product. And any comedian that makes it, they get there through hard work and getting a lot of things right. Um, so from a creative perspective and from a business perspective, um, I, I look at them all. Particularly, actually, um, uh, if you want to see somebody who has done it incredibly fast, uh, it would be Jimmy Carr, because he managed to do it incredibly fast. He came from a marketing background, and he basically shortcutted and, and, and chose that as his route. So I suppose anyone who's successful. So most of you guys here. Cheers. I... Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the youngest on the panel here, but certainly my staff at Theatre 503 are a lot younger than me. Uh, and working with a really passionate and enthusiastic and engaged uh, staff, 95% uh, of whom are volunteers, uh, really does uh, get me up in the morning because I actually get paid. Um, and I sort of think if they can do what they do and not get paid, then I can bloody get up in the morning and be there an hour earlier than them. So um, they really inspire me, yeah. I've been there sort of four and a half years and um, I suppose you, you, you put down roots uh, wherever you are rather, rather naturally. And so the walk that takes me from um, Clapham Junction takes me past... Um, a host of very individual and very personal experiences, uh, and that includes a, f a flower cellar and a, a um, African food shop. And uh, uh, I'm starting to know the saying. Um, you know, you've been somewhere too long when you know the names of bus drivers. Um, and, and I suppose it's that really. It's sort of, and within that, it's sort of individual kind of acts of of, of kindness, which are born out of sense of community i've always been a city boy and i think i'm i always feel like i'm one of the few as a born and bred londoner but i find london and most cities just inspiring and watching if you take london right back to just being our little bit of battersea watching it change watching the kind of developments that happen right on top of us that are then running right the way through the capital you know i love the fact at the moment my big exciting thing is watching independent coffee shops kick the big boys' asses. I'm loving it. No, I love it. I really love it. You go, Starbucks is the biggest, one of the biggest corporates that's in retreat. It opened up faster than any other corporate, and it's shutting down globally faster than any corporate. Independent coffee shops, opening everywhere. And people love them. How exciting. How can you not get inspired about two or three people boiling water <laughs> and beating global companies who don't care. Well, I'm lucky because I work at the Royal College of Arts, so it's absolutely full of people who are incredibly inspirational. Um, so all of our students and all of our staff, um, there's painters, photographers, sculptors, and all the kind of things you might normally be inspired by. But we're, although we're the Royal College of Art, we're 67% design. So we've got teams who are redesigning the interior of NHS ambulances, who are redesigning cycle helmets to make them uh, more efficient and recyclable. And literally everything that goes on in there is unbelievable. People are always thinking of new things to do and design and make and um, uh, so the Royal College of Art. Really simply it's just anyone who uh, manages to get something off the ground and then keep it going and being like either here or 503 or you know a, hair, a hairdressing place or any or a comedy club or whatever it is and kind of getting through all of the naysayers and potentially kind of opposition that you might uh, Come, come across in terms of either, you know, uh, kind of locals or councillors or whatever, but just kind of uh, blindly getting it done. And what do you think's helped you get uh, things done so in Battersea? Stupidity, I reckon. Not, not, really, um, not really kind of closing your eyes to the likely turnout of, uh, you know, of all, all kind of risks, I suppose.
In terms of what inspires me, I'd say on a personal level, there are people that work in my industry and also sort of tech, tech uh, entrepreneurs that inspire me and a little bit like people in your industry, in, in the hair industry, um, they probably, the names may not mean anything to you, but in case they're listening on, on YouTube later, it would be people, the likes of Kevin Rose, Tim Ferriss, um, Gary Vaynerchuk. On a wider level in terms of our business, what inspires me, and we sort of touched on this with some of the other answers, is my team. Um, it's my team back in the office that gives me the confidence to go into pretty much any business situation and know whatever it is that a potential client or an existing client might ask for. I know that we can pretty much deliver what they want, probably with bells on and, and beyond what they might need. And that is an inspiration because it means that there's almost nothing we need to say no to anymore. Uh, I would say what inspires me is uh, stories, actually, um, in that I think if I interview somebody for a job or if I listen to the panel or if I am buying a present for my mum, I think the thing which inspires me or gets me excited is when I see a story. And what I mean by a story is not a once upon a time story, but where I can connect a, sen a potentially series of unconnected random events and connect them together. So when you tell us the story of Starbucks and then share the story of independent coffee shops, there's something in that narrative that hits us. And I get excited by that because I think stories have the power to inspire us and make sense of things that otherwise sometimes don't always make sense. The story of Battersea is a good story, 150 year old, well, longer than that obviously, but in terms of the kind of, the, it, the stories that have grown through this borough, which is now part of the borough of Wandsworth, it's been a radical story and it's always been a story of creativity. Always in Battersea there have been creative ideas back over the last 150 years, so it's great that that continues. And I think that's, that's very much something that we can all take with us, that it's all rooted here and actually in this building. Yeah, I would say. If everyone looks above their head, there's uh, uh, a lovely sign up there which says, non mihi, non tibi, sed nobis, which is also completely, I think, inspirational, which means not for me, not for you, but for us, which has always been a kind of Battersea motto. And yeah, I think it's a good thing.